information or some news. Um, if you could talk, we kind of know about um, MSU's done well selling tickets. If you could give us like a Utah State update or whatever as far as how they're doing, can you, can you speak to that? At all? Sure, yes. <clears throat> Utah State is doing very well as well. Um, I don't have a lot of information to provide from that, that point of view, but um, we expect a pretty good Utah State contingency to join us at the bowl in addition to the um, fantastic New Mexico State contingency that we'll see there at the bowl. So I think it's going to be a really loud, energetic stadium. Ticket sales generally are doing very well. We're way ahead of where we were last year. And last year we had about 33,000 uh, fans in the stadium. So we anticipate at least a 10 to 15% growth on that year over year. So we're really excited. We're hoping to have that whole stadium full of fans for the Battle of the Aggies, as like, I like to say. I'm Derek Gonzalez from the New Mexico State Roundup. Last Sunday, there seemed to be a little bit of um, drama in terms of which teams were going to be announced on the Mountain West end of, end of things. Can you go into any kind of detail on what exactly happened? You know, what I've learned being in the bowl business for now three or four years is that you, you never know what's going to happen on Selection Sunday. You think you might have a couple of teams that are locked in to come, but it never works out that way. And so that's exactly what happened. I mean, um, there were some last minute movements with teams. There were some last minute, um, pre, uh, last minute movements in the rankings. And so people thought they were going to certain bowls and that didn't end up. And so it's sort of a domino effect. So there at the end, we were waiting to find out, you know, the conferences get to choose where those teams go. And there's a lot of factors around how they make that decision. But we were really excited. We were waiting, waiting. We were hoping, you know, that um, we would get a New Mexico State, Utah State matchup because of the history. And uh, we waited and waited. And finally, we got the call a little later than we expected that that's exactly what was going to happen. Andy Morgan, News Channel 9. What <clears throat> There's tons of bowl games, obviously. What makes the Arizona Bowl, in your opinion, unique? Oh, I'm so excited that you asked that. So as many of you know, this is our third year. Our first year, we started with 21,000 fans. We grew to 33,000 fans last year. And this, and this year, we expect somewhere between 38 and 40,000 fans to be at the Nova Home Loans Arizona Bowl. I'd say we're the fastest growing bowl in the bowl landscape, which is really exciting for us. And the reason why we've been able to do that is because we put our student athletes and our fans first. And we put together not just a fantastic bowl game, but a fantastic football festival around that. So we have a um, we have a football we have the Desert Diamond Casino Tailgate Festival, which is um, featuring Grammy Award nominated band uh, Neon Trees, which is so exciting. And everybody who has a bowl ticket gets to go to that tailgate festival for free. In addition to Neon Trees performing at the tailgate festival, we have our now infamous. A nacho Average Tailgate Food Festival. So we have a nacho food festival competition. And so the fans get to choose who they get to, uh, who has the best nachos in Tucson, and we award that during the game. Um, we have tremendous downtown activities. We have a rejuvenated downtown. And then after the, after the game, we have a post-game party downtown, and we are just announcing that Flock of Seagulls will be performing there. Go 80s. And um, so we put together a really fun event, not just only for the fans, but for the student athletes. And so not um, in addition to those activities, we have some really exciting things planned for the players. We have a great player um, party with both teams at Old Tucson Studios, which is famous for a lot of Western movies and television shows. And we've put together a really exciting, uh, exciting day for them there. So we are committed to our conferences, which are the Mountain West and the Sun Belt. They have been terrific partners for our bowl. I can tell you when the Sun Belt came on as our bowl conference partner, we were thrilled because New Mexico State University was so close to us. From the onset, we've been hoping, keeping our fingers crossed, that you guys would put together a bowl eligible team so that you could come to Tucson. Because we recognize the proximity, of course, but also the um, the respect of, of excellency in athletics that you have built in this university. So we are thrilled that um, New Mexico State is bowl eligible. We would love to have New Mexico State again in the future if it works out for us. If Sunbelt is unable to produce a team, um, we would definitely consider New Mexico State University to come to the Nova Home Loans Arizona Bowl. Um, would you like to have that kind of relationship moving forward? 
a bowl game like this? Uh, oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, a big part of that is us making a great showing in this bowl. And obviously the ticket sales and what's going on here has made a great statement that we got a great fan base that will follow us. And that means a lot to any bowl game that you're trying to get, get to. And also, this is an audition for us. You know, it's an audition for us moving forward with our football program. It's a chance for people to see us on TV that haven't seen us maybe before. Uh, so this is the beginning of the story for us, Jason. It's not the end of the story. Getting to the bowl game is not the end of this story. You know, we need this to be the beginning. So there's great things ahead for us here. What have you learned about the, the week, uh, the bowl week and stuff since, since you know, you guys won the game a couple weeks ago? Well, you know, Kim and, and their staff have been outstanding at just informing us. I know Bron Cartwright and Mario have done a great job of, uh, they've already been to the bowl site and seen where we're going to stay. We're staying at just a wonderful place, a resort. And uh, I mean, it, you couldn't be treated any better than we've been treated. And our players are so excited about getting there. Obviously, none of our players have been through this experience before. So all of this is new to them. And that's a big thing for us is educating them that there's a game at the end of this, too. It's not just going out there and having a great time. We want to play well in the game. So um, it's exciting. Uh, we're thrilled about it. And um, you know, I think our players have earned this trip. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Obviously, it's kind of kind of early. You know, the game's in, a, in, I think, two or three weeks. Have you started looking at Utah State um, on film? And what are a couple of things that have stood out to you? Yeah, well, our coaches have been working on uh, Utah State since it was announced. We've also were in the middle of recruiting, too. We had a recruiting weekend last weekend. We have another one this weekend. So. You're juggling a lot of things as a coaching staff here right now. The players had finals last week, so that was important for them to focus on that. We start practice today. Uh, be our first bowl practice for this uh, moving forward. So Utah State is a really well-coached football team. Uh, they're a winning tradition there, and they've been to bowl games. Their players are used to going to bowl games. They're used to winning. Uh, they're kind of a model for what we'd like to aspire to. You know, we'd like to be that consistent in our program. And uh, so they, they've done a wonderful job. They've got tremendous defense, very blitz oriented, uh, excellent players. Jalen Davis, the defensive back, is one of the best we've faced all year. Uh, Jordan Love, their quarterback, is very athletic and presents a lot of problems. They're a real well balanced team on offense, uh, just really well coached. I, I think this is a great matchup, and we'll, we'll have to play our best level. I think it's um, their. I'm wrong here, but like they're a run-based team, and they play a lot of on offense, and they play a lot of man blitzing team. Like those are teams that you've done well against. So, like you said, like I think it's a good matchup for for you guys. Well, it, we think we match up well with uh, Utah State, and I'm sure they feel the same way with us. But you know, they are what they are. You know, they're going to be a blitz team, and they're going to play their coverages. They're not going to change. That's who they are. And obviously, we're a throwing team, and that that's what we are. So. It's kind of strength against strength there. Uh, defensively, we've really improved the last half of the season. We really made some giant strides uh, that I think help us match up better. But this is going to be a tremendous challenge for us. Again, it's the fact that they're used to this. You know, they are a winning team. They've got a winning tradition. Uh, so there's a lot of things for us to overcome. You said that the coaching staff's been out recruiting a lot. Um, what's what's been some of the recruits' feedback in terms of you know this program going to a bowl game? Like, what's what's their kind of how do they feel about it? Well, you know, anytime you get the exposure we've gotten nationally and, and ESPN and all the things, the Bowl Mania shows and those type of things, it helps in recruiting. People know your name that maybe not have known it before. And we added three recruits at the last minute last week that because of that. And uh, we got two more coming in this week that we added just because of that. So uh, that certainly helps. And, you know, when you get them here, then you have to sell them on the university, which is an easy job for us. When people come to visit New Mexico State, Particularly if we get the parents to come with the young man, we're almost undefeated in recruiting because they come here and they get a sense of the family atmosphere here and the uh, wonderful academic setting and then the athletic uh, facilities that have improved so much and uh, people are blown away by what they see here. Uh, so it's not a hard sell once you get people to come here and visit. Coach, what's your approach going to be? You kind of touched on a little bit with all the festivities that go on leading up to the bowl game once you get to Tucson. What's your approach going to be with your team, you know, obviously knowing that you got a game on the 29th? You're talking about when we get to the bowl? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, look, we want our team to really enjoy uh, being in the bowl game. They've worked really hard to get there. It's very important that uh, for us that they get to experience every activity that Kim and her group have uh, set up for them. It's going to be a great time. Uh, they've done a great job of setting up our practice schedule, so it, it works really well for us. We get to practice in the mornings or early afternoons, so we're, we don't conflict with anything. You don't feel like you're rushed, so it's a great setup. Uh, so really, we'll, all the bowl preparation, the game plan will be put in before we get to Arizona. 
So once we get there, it's really just keeping things polished up for the game. It kind of goes probably without seven, but you know, so much build up, you know, finally getting to a bowl, you know, how much would it mean to this program to, to go there and to have a good showing and, and win a bowl game? Well, that, that's the whole goal, and, and that is, that's the idea for us. And uh, again, with our players, you know, uh, when people were talking about us being bowl eligible and getting the sixth win, I kept reminding people, you know, our players aren't talking about that. What they're talking about is getting respect. And nationally, we've not been on the scene for a long time. And uh, they want people to recognize that we've got a good program here, we've got good players. So it was more than just winning six games and getting bowl eligible for us from within inside the team. And it's the same with this bowl. Now our players have an opportunity to be seen on a national uh, stage. Uh, people all over the country are going to watch this game on television. Um, so it's a chance for our players, again, to gain some of that respect that they've been after. Have you ever, um, have you ever had a team in that stadium? And does this, um, you know, the lead up to it and the bowl game match itself remind you of any place that you've been? Yeah, I, I haven't played at Arizona Stadium, been to Tucson quite a bit. You know, Arizona is a very fertile area for us in recruiting. That's the other reason this bowl game is just couldn't be better for us. Uh, we have several young men committed already for this recruiting class from Arizona. Uh, quite a few of them visited here last week. So uh, that couldn't be, couldn't be any better. Um, I, I can just tell you this, I've never been to a bad bowl game. <laughs> they're, they're, all, they're all good. Uh, but I will say this, I think that uh, what the Arizona Bowl's done, the way it's set up, and it's so player friendly and coach friendly, uh, you know, the way they've set things up, I think they've really gone out of their way to make this game uh, work for the coaches, their families, and the players, and, and uh, not stress you out over the game coming and the activities bumping up with each other. I think it's just a re really well organized group. Mars kind of kept people up to date on ticket sales on Twitter. I, I mean, is that, it doesn't really come as a surprise, but I'm just wondering how many people have hit you up and what, you, what do you think of the response so far from people buying tickets from the school? Well, I, I mean, it's outstanding and it's not a surprise. You know, I really felt like all the way back in 2011 when I was an assistant coach here that if you ever turned the corner at this place that people would really jump on board and support the program. And that was proven that last home game when 27,000 Aggie fans are here in the stadium for the last game. I mean, it was unbelievable. That, and that's what a great college atmosphere should look like. And people and students storming the field after the game. And um, again, it's the beginning, it's not the end. We can make that look like that every Saturday here. Um, and uh, I think our fans are ready for that. And our players need to be responsible for that. They need to help make that happen by continuing the success we've had. And uh, it's a great story, and again, it's just beginning. Well, was former players of yours, I, I saw you know Julian Edelman kind of chiming in and congratulating yeah. you. Uh, you know, Devon House, a former Aggie, and uh, a lot of other former Aggies, kind of you know really excited for this program. What does that mean to, to kind of hear from from former players of yours and you know players past of the Aggies? Yeah, it's been uh, outstanding. The, the former Aggie players, I mean, I had guys coming up to me that played here in the 1990s and 2000s that I hadn't met before after the game. They were just in tears. And uh, what an awesome experience. And they're all saying they're going to be at the bowl, and that was great. Former players, Devon House, who's an NFL player for us with the Packers. And, uh, you know, he was hoping the game would be on a different day so he could run down here and watch the game. He's going to be working that day. But uh, I think uh, Julian Edelman, who uh, played for me at Kent State and plays with the Patriots now, uh, Julian's actually planned on coming to the game. So we're real excited about that. Brian Lanehart, who was his roommate uh, and one of my favorite players I've ever had, actually flew out here with his wife to watch the uh, last game against South Alabama. And he's going to come with Julian to the, to the bowl game. So. Uh, those are things that make you feel good as a coach when former players still want to be a part of your life and, uh, and want you to be in there. So uh, that's been very rewarding. Coach, you've spoken very highly of your assistants. Um, can you go more specifically with uh, Coach Christian and Coach Holbrook? What have they brought to the program as former quarterbacks? And you know, how have they helped in terms of recruiting as well? Yeah, well, uh, Matt Christian, uh, Matt played quarterback for me here in 2011 when I was the offensive coordinator and, and had a tremendous year. And he graduate coached here, and then we promoted him to a full-time coach. Coaches are running backs, and obviously everybody knows Larry Rose and the career he's had here. Well, he's been coached by Matt Christian, and there's a lot to coaching. Uh, Matt's made Larry a better player, and uh, he's an excellent recruiter. He's brought in some of the better players we have here. Um, Chase, the same deal. Chase holds every quarterback record there is here at New Mexico State. Uh, so everybody's kind of playing second fiddle to him. As good a year as Tyler's had, he's still second to Chase in just about every category there. 
Um, but being at, at Washington State under Mike Leach, you know, Chase brought some things to our offense that um, really helped kind of get us over the top this year in the passing game. Uh, we're very similar to their offense anyway. We're an air raid system. We throw the ball, you know, 40, 45 times. Um, but I think Chase really brought some things to help us uh, move forward. And then again, Andy Richmond, our offensive line coach, has done one of the best jobs of any old line coach in the country. And then Corey Martin, our wide receiver coach, uh, obviously Jaleel Scott's going to the senior bowl and he's had a tremendous year and our wide receiver core has just been phenomenal. So there, there's been a lot of great coaching here on both sides of the ball. Uh, and those guys are all young coaches. You know, those, those guys have all kind of cut their teeth here at New Mexico State. And the uh, biggest thing for us is hanging on to those guys. Coach, you kind of touched on it after the, the win against South Alabama, but now that's kind of happening, um, you know, you talk a lot about continuing this and getting to a bowl game every year. How important is it to kind of get some of these extra practices for the younger guys to kind of carry on this tradition? Yeah, President Carlos and I were both talking about that back here. It's like you get two spring practices now. Uh, and it's, it's really important that this is an opportunity to take all the young men that maybe were redshirted this year uh, or that haven't played a lot. And at the end of each practice, you can actually just work with them and get you know 12 to 15 more practices with those guys. So biggest thing for us is Tyler is a senior quarterback who's been a three-year starter here. So we're going to have a new starting quarterback next year. We have three freshmen that are redshirting here uh, that haven't had any experience. So this is a time to give them an advantage and uh, get a head start on the spring ball. So position-wise, that's the most important group. That, and we're going to start that today with those guys at the end of practice. They'll get a lot more work than uh, what they've had during the season. So it's a huge advantage for any team that's going to a bowl and certainly will help us moving forward. Any other questions? Guys on the conference call, do you guys have any questions for Coach or Kim? Yeah, I just wanted to ask basically if uh, by the time this game is played, will you have anybody that's still out as is the whole team going to be healthy by this time? Uh, you know, Ken, I think we got uh, O.J. Clark should be back, a wide receiver who had a shoulder injury, missed uh, last week. Uh, the only person I think that's probably questionable for us is still Jaden Wright uh, with a foot injury. Uh, had a fracture in his foot. I'm not sure how. I think they're going to try to clear him to play. We'll see how much he can practice. Um, don't know that he'll be 100%. But other than that, we, we should be at full strength. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how much does style of play factor into when you guys, I know, you know you have your conference um, contracts and stuff like that, but how much does style of play, because like Coach was saying, like, I think it is a, a good matchup, and I, I know that the good year director, when I, when I spoke with him, he said, he said that he thought it was going to be a fun, fun game for yeah. parents to watch, too. Yeah. <clears throat> I think uh, for the conferences, they're looking to put together a competitive game, a game that's going to um, make the fans excited to watch the game, drive people to the to the universities, and and get people excited about it. So I I, I do think that the the style of the play is really important to the matchups. I wish we had more influence over that, um, but certainly that there are the people in the conferences that are making those decisions are paying attention to those details. Any other questions? Coach, last, uh, last game as a, a member of the Sun Belt, um, go in with a little bit of extra motivation or chip on your shoulder at all? Well, yeah, I mean, our, our guys have played with a chip on their shoulder all year. It's been one of the things that has motivated our team. Uh, and again, I talked about the respect thing that we were after uh, from the beginning, and, and uh, that continues on. You know, moving forward, I mean, I've been in this before as an independent, when I was coaching at East Carolina, we were an independent and we moved that program into Conference USA and now they're in the American Conference. So uh, this is not my first rodeo on this, on this situation. There's a lot of advantages to us being an independent. You know, right now we don't get to play an FCS opponent. Moving forward, we do. We get to play a lot more regional games than what we've played in the past. Uh, Mario's done a great job putting the schedule together for us. So there's some real advantages to this also. Uh, but this is I've told our players that you know every week that we play, we're auditioning for the next conference. And so this is just another great opportunity for us playing a Mountain West team. We're going to play Utah State next year also, so uh, and Wyoming. So we've got some Mountain West teams coming. Um, again, it's a, it's an exciting time for us. Last question: Could you tell us how uh, Nova Home became the title sponsor for the game? I'd love to, since that's my day job. Um, uh, we're, yes, Nova Home Loans is a Tucson-based company. We've been around for 30, 36 years in Tucson, so we're a homegrown company. And 
Um, one of the most important things to Nova Home Loans is giving back to our community, for sure. It's part of our core values. And when we were approached to become the title sponsor of the bowl, we were very excited for one very specific reason, and that's because this bowl gives 100% of the net proceeds back to charity. And so being able to participate in a bowl who has that as their core value as well was a perfect um, matching, a matchup for us. So we, you know, we didn't, we didn't talk about how many commercial spots we were going to get or what the logo looked like. We talked about how we could get those dollars back into the pockets of local charities. And that is always the focus of the bowl for us. Um, and we offer lots of opportunities for charities to get involved with the bowl. And we allow our large sponsors to help delegate where the charitable donations go. So if there is a uh, New Mexico State Aggie that's listening to this, that, um, if they sponsor uh, part of the bowl, they will be able to donate dollars right back into this community as well. So we're very excited about that. And if I can add really quickly, um, we have been so charmed by the enthusiasm of the New Mexico State fans. I mean, they have been terrific. It, the enthusiasm has been unbelievable. And last night we learned that a New Mexico State University fan who wants to rena uh, remain anonymous is going to underwrite um, two tickets for any Las Cruces teacher that wants to go to the bowl. So we are working out the details on that, but we are really excited that your fans want to also contribute to this community and help our local heroes here in Las Cruces by sending teachers to the game. So more details to come on that front. Any, any other questions? Thank you, thank you, Governor. All right. Again, so thank nice you. To meet you. Nice thank to you. meet you. <laughs> we'll see you tonight at the basketball game. Yes.